the wrap-up show as we've been here all day long. It's Springs, it's Signing Day Central, presented by Coke Zero. We're at the Burger Varsity Football House on the campus of Lafayette College. We are in Easton, Pennsylvania. I'm sure some of you have been with us most of the day. Some of you are here for just the uh, very first time. And I am with head coach Frank Devani. It's taken a while to get the head coach on the program. We've talked with the offensive coordinator, the defensive coordinator, but nobody is more important than the head coach. Frank, heading into your 14th season, your 27th season on Lafayette College's campus, your 37th season of being a football coach. My question, after your first year of scholarships and the signees are in, are you gonna to sleep tonight? <laughs> Only tonight, Gary, because it's gonna start all over again tomorrow. In fact, uh, this process has is, is moved forward so fast, we've already offered a couple of juniors. So, uh, you know, it's just that kind of thing that has changed with the scholarship uh, landscape, but certainly, um, it was fun, it was more work, uh, more time, more effort, a lot more intense uh, evaluation process, but all in all in the end, uh, very happy with the young men that will be joining us this fall. The timetable this year is different. I mean, with scholarships coming in, uh, things have kind of churned a little bit, and you mentioned the fact that you're already looking at juniors, but let's go back to how that timetable has changed from the years when you didn't have scholarships. Well, first off, probably the most glaring change was that there were 18 official visits uh, prior to the Christmas holiday, including about a half a dozen during the season on days of home games, which mm -hmm. is quite a challenge to handle families uh, on day of a game. You know, we're a little busy and uh, certainly following the game, uh, regardless of the outcome, one has to be ready to uh, spend that time. And after a night game, makes the evening mm -hmm. even a little longer. And, uh, but uh, that was a, certainly a major change in the fact that over half of our scholarships were verbally committed prior to the holiday. In previous years, we wouldn't even have our visitation weekends until the last two weekends for the signing date because of our students just returning to class from winter semester. We've had to visit families and, and uh, prospective student athletes here while our students were on break, but a lot of our players were willing to come back uh, the willingness of our faculty is just unbelievable, uh, getting them while they're on break and they certainly don't have to come in, but every time you call on any of them, they're, they're ready, able, and willing to do it. And that sets us apart from a lot mm -hmm. of other people. So the process involves an enormous amount of people, it takes tremendous cooperation by a lot of people to be able to get this done, and then a great job that uh, Scott Morris and his group do in, in, in putting this on like none other in our league. You talk about enormous number of people. I would also think there's enormous number of athletes and, and uh, scholar athletes to look at. Any idea of what the number was you started with and, and then you got it all weaned down to a, a particular a workable number? Well, certainly at the beginning, there's probably several thousand you know, mm -hmm. in, the, in the data bank. It's quickly uh, reduced by our coaches in their specific recruiting areas. But now any area is opened up to you, but certainly physically you're only going to get to so many. And certainly the regions that have been good to us are going to continue to be uh, good to us. In some ways you probably don't have to reach as far, but in other ways young men from afar are reaching to us because of the quality of education. In fact, we have scholarships and evidence by we went out to Colorado on a whim to, to look at a defensive lineman north of Denver and we signed two kids south of Denver plus uh, another uh, young man from Colorado visited as well, so um, that turned out to be a good trip for us. Yeah, uh, nine different states and uh, some states that I don't think I've ever heard of <laughs> when I've mentioned uh, Lafayette football players. Frank is going to come back in the last segment of the wrap-up show and we'll talk not specifically about individual football players, but about the 20 football players that he has indeed signed to get ready to play football here at Lafayette College and how they satisfy those needs. First up, however, after Frank, is Susan Avery. She's not a football player, but she may be the most important person the new football players meet on campus. I'll tell you why when I come back. The continued success of the Lafayette football program is made possible through the generous support of the Maroon Club's Friends of Lafayette Football. This network of alumni, parents, and friends of football has enjoyed record-breaking growth, and you can get in on the excitement. I'm head coach Frank Pavani. I invite you to join the Friends of Lafayette Football and help me continue building upon our success.
primary fundamental belief is that better ingredients, better pizza is quality. And that's what Papa John's is all about. Nobody does what Papa John's does. Right now, get any large pizza with your choice of toppings, even our signature specialties, only $11. That's right. Order now at PapaJohns.com and get any large pizza with any toppings, just $11, only at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> Coke Zero. I'm with Susan Everett, and Susan is the Dana Professor of Economics, and she is also the football faculty mentor. Now, I just bet there are 20 families for sure out there watching. <laughs> we know we have a large audience right now, but I know there are 20 families out there because their sons are coming to Lafayette College. If you don't run or meet anybody, make sure you meet Susan Everett because, Susan, you are the, the football mentor. That's so, right. Yeah. First of all, Talk about the kids that are coming here as freshmen and some of the things that they really need to know about the academic side of Lafayette sure. College. Yes, and absolutely, my role as the football mentor is actually to kind of emphasize how to be academically successful here, particularly with the hours that one has to put in for football. So mm -hmm. I've already met at least half of the 25 uh, guys who are coming here and met with their families throughout the recruiting process. And I already talked a little bit about some of that. For, for, most of the, for all of our students coming to Lafayette, there's a leap between high school and college. Mm -hmm. So there's, there's a big gap between what you could do in high school to be successful and what you need to do in college to be successful. So I start off like talking to them about that. So some of it's really straightforward, simple advice, but sometimes it takes more than one hearing for them to get it. You know, you always have to go to class. You got to sit in front of the class. You got to be engaged when you're in class. Some of the basics. Get your books on time. Make sure you're reading them on time. A lot of that stuff, but also smaller kinds of things. So making sure that you're uh, getting help if you need it, if you need a tutor, uh, if you feel like you were placed into a math class and you find out you're in over your head the first week, we can make those kinds of adjustments at Lafayette. Where that's what we're all about. But you know, you need to make sure you speak up and come and talk to me about mm -hmm, that kind of mm -hmm. thing so that they get the right classes at the right time so they can be successful. Boy, you sound a little bit like my mother when I went off to college the first, <laughs> the first time I did that, but she never came to campus with yeah, me. I didn't have anybody to turn it's to. It's easier when it's not your own kid because these guys will sometimes listen to me. <laughs> and it's not just freshmen. You, are, you stay yes. with the football program, so mm -hmm. you're dealing with 60, 70 uh, students yeah, at one time. I, I would say, you know, as they go along, some of them need me more than others, so some I will be very close with in terms of their advising all the way through their senior year. Others may go off to major in the sciences or some area where I'm not going to be as used since I'm an economics professor. And even some of the economics kids, they don't need as much advising. Mm -hmm. But my role mm -hmm. is really to help out the kids who need uh, that extra help, sort of acclimating to the school, getting used to the academics. Um, and then, you know, a lot of that's just you develop lifelong friendships through that. So. Well, I know you weren't a wide receiver, so my next question no. is why <laughs> this this second job because I know right. you're a professor but right. why this second job uh, yeah. for you and your interest in in college football yeah well uh, it sort of came about because we have a lot of students who major a lot of football players who major in economics so mm -hmm. it was sort of a natural fit and at the time when coach Devani first approached me about this I was the department head of department economics so it was sort of like who over there might be interested in this and I thought well, you know I'm interested in this right I've had a lot of these guys in class I get to know them I go to the games anyway um, so I really enjoy the this aspect of my job where I get to be kind of on the athletic side of things I would also bet that uh, you can sit back and just simply reflect on some of the young men and that you have helped here at Lafayette. Mm -hmm. There's got to be a pretty good feeling uh, in your heart about some kids that maybe might not have made it through here. We know how yep. tough it is to do yep. that and yet they made it and, and I'm mm -hmm. sure you were a big part of that success. I like to think there's a few out there that probably I really did help a lot and there were many others that just made my life uh, really enjoyable as a professor in my classes and I keep in touch with a lot of the graduates which I think is really nice. I saw you walk in here tonight and you saw one of your uh, football players and you started mm -hmm. helping him immediately. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I run into him a lot on campus. There's quite a few of them. So. All yeah. right. One of the 20 guys uh, comes on campus. Uh, how does he find Su Susan Averitt? Well, he'll actually hear from me right away. Mm -hmm. So he'll actually hear from me even before, right around class registration time. So I'll actually, in addition to the emails I'll get from the dean of the college and from the coaching staff, you know, Coach Fine helps a lot with the academics, so he and I talk a lot. But they'll actually get an email from me just welcoming them to campus and talking about the math placement tests and course selection and that sort of thing. So I'll start working with them right from the beginning. 
I get a feeling you better listen to her when you uh, come on <laughs> campus. Next up is the Director of Athletics, Dr. Bruce McCutcheon. My thanks to Susan for stopping by. And again, a very, very integral part of the success of Lafayette football. Stay with us. Thanks, Gary. Always a pleasure. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I was just going to walk off of that. Our primary fundamental belief is that better ingredients, better pizza is quality, and that's what Papa John's is all about. Nobody does what Papa John's does. Right now, get any large pizza with your choice of toppings, even our signature specialties, only $11. That's right. Order now at PapaJohns.com and get any large pizza with any toppings, just $11, only at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> The continued success of the Lafayette football program is made possible through the generous support of the Maroon Club's Friends of Lafayette Football. This network of alumni, parents, and friends of football has enjoyed record-breaking growth, and you can get in on the excitement. I'm head coach Frank Pavani. I invite you to join the Friends of Lafayette Football and help me continue building upon our success. This is the wrap-up show. It is National Signing Day, so it's Signing Day Central here at Lafayette College. It is presented by Coke Zero, and I'm sitting now with the Director of Athletics, Dr. Bruce McCutcheon, and it is an exciting day here today because uh, scholarships are here at the Patriot League, and uh, the first time we've had a day where you know people are signing their name and we're basically paying for their education, and uh, that's got to be a great feeling. It is a great feeling. It's neat. This day is, is a neat thing anyway in, in college athletics. It's all across America. Mm -hmm. Kids are signing and picking their schools and, and um, a lot of hype about that now. Not like it used to be. I remember on signing day, I signed my letter in my dad's bedroom and we, <laughs> we put it in an envelope and mailed it and that, right. was, that was all it was to it. So it's gotten to be a whole lot bigger uh, event nationally. And it's very exciting here for us. We certainly have been doing the scholarship thing with a couple of other sports, mm -hmm. and those those guys signed uh, the soccer's um, a field hockey signed today as well. But it's the first time for football, and that that makes it pretty special. Bruce, you were part of the process. The presidents were, the athletic directors were. Uh, talk a little bit about uh, the process. Some of the reservations that I'm sure were out there, but I get a sense too that those reservations have uh, sort of gone away. Well, yeah, the the, the first. And foremost, reservation was the financial mm -hmm. uh, aspect of it, uh, how that was going to play out, when, what most people were going to do in terms of their football programs, would we'll just convert the money they're already using in a need-based model to a scholarship model. Uh, but I you know, had to make sure that the, all those numbers balance correctly with women's sports for the, the Title IX mm -hmm. aspect mm -hmm. of, of it. All of us are Which committed. a lot of people probably don't realize. Correct. And, and all of us in the league are committed uh, to making sure that, that that took place. There were some that still had some philosophical issues with, mm -hmm. with football scholarships, but for the most part, everybody was on board with that because across the board of all the other sports, um, people were offering basically um, aid above of demonstrated needs. So mm -hmm. that, that aspect of wasn't so much. And what also happened with this is when uh, the presidents really got engaged in the whole conversation, it was in 2008, in October 2008, we all know what happened with a uh, the financial issues with, with the country. So right. that, that kind of gave some pause to the thing too. But now that we're, we're off and running and I think it's, it's a really good thing for our league um, and, and for college football generally. And I think it's a great thing for the college in terms of now the full spectrum of young men who are out there graduating high school. You can now deal with that full spectrum. They don't have to fall into certain categories uh, that would allow you to either offer them financial aid or they would be wealthy enough to come to Lafayette College. Mm -hmm. Now it's, it's everybody has an opportunity. That's correct. And really what 
now the major criteria is boiled down to obviously are they do they have the correct academic profile for our institution and second how good a player are they mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. really what it that it's down to now so you're right we don't have to worry about fitting them into certain boxes uh, because of the, the, the financial need analysis. For sure. And another uh, exciting thing around the corner, I know we don't want to certainly overlook the 149th edition of the Lafayette Lehigh football rivalry, but 150 is going to be somewhat special. 150 is going to be extremely special. It's, it's a special thing anyway that uh, most played rivalry 150 times mm -hmm. in the two schools have played. Uh, far and away more than any other the, the rivalry games in, in America. Uh, so that in and of itself is special. But then to, um, to be able to host that, that game at, at Yankee Stadium in that, that stage, uh, I think the young people who are going to be involved in it, I think are, are jacked already. Mm -hmm. And I know that the coaches used it as part of the recruiting process for, for this current class. But I think across the board between the students who are going to participate all the way up to the fans who participate either in live at the stadium or in other, some of the other venues is going to be a really neat thing. What we're planning on too is just making it more than it's just that game. Uh, we're looking at just a host of activities surrounding that game for uh, the days leading up to it and of course the day it, itself. Uh, it's going to be a pretty neat affair. And I know you can guarantee that I'll be able to do the play-by-play. -play. No I, question. I know you can't do that. <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Also an exciting day. You know, we've talked about football all day, but right now on GoLeopards.com, we have uh, men and women's soccer and field hockey. They're all up there with their signees also. So uh, for you, your job is not just about football. It's about every sport on campus. It's about all 23 of them and the experiences that those young people have. And yes, there's... Uh, I. I've been watching as it comes off the wire, mm -hmm. if, you, if you will, the different classes, the kids that have come in. And I can't thank the, our athletic communication staff enough for the outstanding job they do, not only with this production and what's going on here, but with all of our sports. Uh, all of our sports are important to us, and the folks in communications really put that to the fore in terms of promoting those those kids and what they're doing. So I really thank them for that. And I think if anything today, we've learned about the cooperation that takes place between the athletic departments, the faculty, certainly the admissions department, and certainly the coaching staff here at Lafayette College. Speaking of the coaching staff, the head coach will be back and we will start talking about uh, the 20 recruits that are coming to Lafayette College uh, this coming, so, uh, the next semester when uh, we get back in the fall. But for now, you're watching the wrap-up show and I'll be back with the head coach. The continued success of the Lafayette football program is made possible through the generous support of the Maroon Club's Friends of Lafayette Football. This network of alumni, parents, and friends of football has enjoyed record-breaking growth, and you can get in on the excitement. I'm head coach Frank Pavani. I invite you to join the Friends of Lafayette Football and help me continue building upon our success. primary fundamental belief is that better ingredients, better pizza is quality. And that's what Papa John's is all about. Nobody does what Papa John's does. Right now, get any large pizza with your choice of toppings, even our signature specialties, only $11. That's right. Order now at PapaJohns.com and get any large pizza with any toppings, just $11, only at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> The continued success of the Lafayette football program is made possible through the generous support of the Maroon Club's Friends of Lafayette Football. This network of alumni, parents, and friends of football has enjoyed record-breaking growth, and you can get in on the excitement. I'm head coach Frank Pavani. I invite you to join the Friends of Lafayette Football and help me continue building upon our success.
Welcome back to the wrap-up show. I am with head coach Frank Tavani. 20 new recruits coming on campus, the first scholarship class in the history of Lafayette football. So an exciting day here. Broken down, 10 offensive recruits, 9 defensive recruits, 1 special teams recruit. I want to talk a little bit about offense. Your needs going into uh, the recruitment of your offensive uh, players this season. Well, certainly in terms of numbers, you're always looking at your offensive line. Uh, you can never have too many of those mm -hmm. guys. Certainly we were able to bring four in to shore up and give us that three deep depth that we need so desperately there. Obviously quarterback was a concern and became more of a concern about 10 days ago when uh, one of our quarterbacks, Louis Pappas, uh, decided to withdraw from school and probably transfer. And we had already lost Kyle Orzanski to transfer. So that left us with two quarterbacks. So. Uh, our idea was to sign one, but we ended up uh, having to sign two, obviously, and it worked out very well. Uh, very happy with both of those young men. I guess the good news, Frank, is uh, towards the end of the season last year, there wasn't a senior out there on the offensive side of the football. So you bring back a, a lot of experience, but you also bring in, and I'm amazed anymore at the size of these young men, but you bring in some linemen that range in that 6'3", 6'5", 6'6", area, and anywhere ranging from 265, 285 pounds. I mean, these are, those are goals you used to try to aspire to when they were here. They're already there in terms of size. Well, it's great having that kind of height, Gary, because you know, a lot of times you can't make them taller. You know mm -hmm. they're going to get bigger and stronger just with general maturation when they're here. So if you've got that kind of height in the body frame, that you know they're going to get bigger. These young men uh, you know, are really athletic for their size as well, and that's what you have more opportunity to recruit that type of student athlete when you know you have you have scholarships. We talked about uh, earlier in our earlier segment about the travel and the distance this season uh, going to Colorado, uh, to Virginia, to Florida, uh, certainly uh, Tennessee, a couple of kids out of the Tennessee area. This has been somewhat unheard of for your recruiting class. Uh, how did that all come about and uh, obviously you, you told me earlier you went to Colorado to get one player you ended up getting two so uh, that certainly was successful. Well, these were decisions, Gary, that uh, you know, occurred along the way. Um, you know, we recruited hard our regional areas as we always do, where we physically have coaches in those areas, the areas that have been good to us all along, and predominantly, obviously, this region within a three to four hour driving radius, and then down the East Coast, certainly, we've mm -hmm. been down in Florida, but it opens up other opportunities because more people are interested in coming to us knowing we have outstanding education and the opportunity uh, to play football you know, on a full scholarship. So uh, we received a lot of information and we were particularly interested in a young man north of Denver. Uh, so we ended up sending two coaches out instead of sending one for one day. We sent two for four days and uh, got our name out there, got in a lot of high schools and ended up signing uh, two other young men. Frank, what's it like, uh, something maybe you haven't experienced before, What's it like to make that phone call to a young man and tell him that right now, at no cost, for the next four years, he can come to this great institution, play some football, get a tremendous academic uh, experience? I, I imagine a lot of yelling and screaming on the other side of that phone from the parents and, uh, and the student athletes. Well, Gary, sometimes that's the case, but when you're on the young men that uh, we're on, with the type of talent they have, both certainly in the classroom and on the field, they have other offers, so mm -hmm. maybe if you're the first offer, they're all excited, and that may mean something special at that moment, but when they have six other offers, um, just like it, obviously, uh, you know, they've got some, got some choosing to do, but uh, certainly when you make that kind of offer to what, what we're talking about, which in essence over a four-year period, uh, give or take a few dollars uh, with the scholarship plus books, you're talking, you know, a quarter million dollar investment over four years. Yeah, has to make you feel pretty good, though. No doubt, it's a great opportunity. Well, that's a little bit about the offense. We'll talk about the defense when we come back, and we'll wrap all this up as uh, Frank, I guess, gives us his real heartfelt feelings about uh, this first year of college scholarships. Stay with us. The continued success of the Lafayette football program is made possible through the generous support of the Maroon Club's Friends of Lafayette Football. This network of alumni, parents, and friends of football has enjoyed record-breaking growth, and you can get in on the excitement. I'm head coach Frank Pavani. 
I invite you to join the Friends of Lafayette football and help me continue building upon our success. primary fundamental belief is that better ingredients, better pizza is quality. And that's what Papa John's is all about. Nobody does what Papa John's does. Right now, get any large pizza with your choice of toppings, even our signature specialties, only $11. That's right. Order now at PapaJohns.com and get any large pizza with any toppings, just $11, only at PapaJohns.com. Better ingredients, better pizza, Papa John's. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Gary Lalbach. He's head coach Frank Devani. We've already talked a little bit about the offense. Remember, you can go on GoLeopards.com and see every one of the individual players of the 20 that are coming to Lafayette for next season. Frank, nine defensive players coming in. I'm sure the needs were a little greater on the defensive side of the football than they might have been on the offensive side. Uh, particularly that defensive line. Well, graduating three uh, players from the defensive line certainly was an immediate need to shore that up, particularly in a depth both an inside the two tackle spots and the two outside spots. So uh, we're certainly able to take care of those needs as best we saw. Linebacker, we have you know some mm -hmm. good young men coming in there. Again, it fills in and creates a good depth situation for us. And our secondary is pretty strong, and, and, uh, and we added two young men there. Uh, one of them, Ben Carroll, has the ability to play both corner and safety, so he gives you a lot of, a lot of flexibility. So, uh, you know, pretty, uh, you know, pretty happy with that group and a group that's athletic and, uh, you know, runs extremely well. We talk about this class coming in, but in reality, you've now had three good recruiting classes in a row. This one, and certainly you have a very strong freshman and sophomore group that will now become juniors and uh, and sophomores. So. Uh, there's a really nice nucleus there right now. Well, we've got a lot of young men, as you well know, that gained some valuable experience. Some of it was, uh, was, was a little tough, but uh, gained some valuable experience. And uh, that's going to you know, really uh, pay dividends for us. We've got a quarterback that started five games, and it's truly a winner. Mm -hmm. uh, could be counted on both on and off the field. Uh, really feel good uh, going into it with Zach. And then uh, we got Andrew Zerg, who's going to get a lot of... Uh, reps during spring and uh, then we have two young freshmen and we think they're both very talented. I looked at the, uh, the people coming back. I didn't see a punter. You went and got one. He's got himself a pretty secure job right now. Well, you look at the entire film. I know you've seen some clips. Uh, uh, really has a, a lively leg. Yes, and, he does. Uh, yeah, really did a good job. He's got great height and uh, hang time and distance. So we're, we're looking forward to that. And he has the ability to kick as well. So he can help you both ways that way. And uh, uh, was certainly something that we <laughs> definitely needed to have. So as we look from afar at the, the 20 kids coming in, uh, I imagine you feel pretty good. Well, you do, Gary, and I know a lot of, awful lot of questions today when you know, people were you know, um, you know, writing in and tweeting in today about how quickly any of these you know, are going to impact. As always, you look for your skilled players to have that impact on special teams. You know, have an impact at a position is another mm -hmm. situation, mm -hmm. a tougher one, and the adjustment of the young man, both being away from home, uh, being in a new place, all new playbook, uh, then school starting and the challenges academically. That is a huge transition and uh, one that you, you can't rush. Some you know, young men will be quicker than others to be ready to play, and we'll just have to see. And I only know after uh, preseason camp who's going to be maybe more ready to play than others, but I do believe in... Uh, that uh, quite a few of them will fill immediate backup spots, which means your next man in. So, uh, you know, we feel confident in the talent level of this group. And a final uh, thought, it, it was a huge transition to get to scholarships. And I know you've told me all day long how many people within the college community have helped make this uh, transition smoothly. Uh, we've talked to many of them today, but I'm sure you want to thank them. Well, you can't, uh, you know, thank everyone here at the college enough, both, you know, from our administration, you know, faculty, uh, people dining services, our custodial staff, everybody that takes pride in what they do here at Lafayette. 
Uh, and it's not just the Lafayette football family, it's the Lafayette family, and I think that's why we do so well when our recruits and their parents visit campus and they really get a sense of that, uh, why this is such a very special place. See you April 20th, spring game? I'll be there. The word was that I might be calling plays that day. I don't know if, Go that's right ahead. if Coach is going to allow me to do that. Coach will be on, by the way, ESPN 1230. Uh, so he'll be on at 620 to talk uh, about the recruits right here in the Lehigh Valley. That's ESPN 1230. Well, my thanks to everybody. Matt Panto put this uh, day together. We've been on the air since noontime. Thanks to all of the guests who uh, managed to stop by. If any of you have been with us since noontime, we thank you so much for spending time. This has been Signing Day Central, presented by Coke Zero. Thanks for watching. I'm Gary Laubach. Good night, everyone.